Thank you all for coming. We are joined by defensive end Jordan Silva and coach Sean Lewis, who will give us an opening statement in just a second, and running back Justin Rankin. Coach? Yes, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to all the, the, the fans, the friends, the family, the alumni who came back to make Dick Stadium a great atmosphere today. Really hopeful that in the future, and when we get back here in two weeks, that we pack the stadium again and get more of those seats filled. It was a great environment for our kids to play in. Obviously, this one hurts, came up short. Kids fought their, their tails off, um, and, and we need to do a better job finishing, not just the end of the game, but, but finishing drives, finishing the half. You know, Too often, we settle for, for field goals in the red zone as opposed to, to touchdowns. And, and at the moment of truth, I told the kids, you know, downstairs, moment of truth, moment of technique. We just got to do a better job showing up, and, and our level of training needs to rise throughout the course of the week so we can make those plays when necessary in those critical moments so we can find ourselves one point ahead as opposed to one point down. But, but this one hurts, but really proud of the way our kids fought and, and competed today, and we'll continue to grow and get better from this and, and look forward to the next opportunity. Justin, for another 100 yard game, and some, you had some big runs, you are kind of changing fields. What is it about your running game that allowed you to keep your eyes up all the time and kind of be able to switch fields so easily? I mean, honestly, in some of those, probably should have just ran straight, probably would have scored. Uh, different outcome of the game, but I mean, I just keep my eyes, you know, mm -hmm. on, a, on a swiggle, make, make sure that I can make people miss. That's what I do, do best, so. Mm -hmm. Jordan, for you, after how last week ended, how did it feel to come out and have kind of the dominant game you had up front? Uh, man, I felt enough of it. Like, we, the week of preparation was, uh, you know, mm -hmm. key. You know, we knew that this was a physical team. We knew that we had to exceed the violence, you know. And uh, so that's what the preparation came in. We knew we had to, you know, start fast, you know. So. Jordan, you guys had, I think, three takeaways inside your own 25-yard line. We really kept the momentum going. I mean, was it something conscious? Were you guys trying to strip the ball or anything? Uh, or was it just... Yeah, so during uh, during the week of practice, uh, Coach Kaufman always emphasizes strip the ball. So anytime we're going on scouts or team, you know, we you know, we all crowd the ball or the house ball and we all try to strip it away. So that really, you know, helps uh, at the game, you know, just second nature to strip out the ball. So Justin P last time we were here you talked about what he's playing, how much that has kind of galvanized the team. He had some threats and throws that were I mean, Incredible. What is it like to be able to go back and know you have a quarterback and fit a ball in a place like that? I mean, it's, it's nice. You know, it's nice that, that we can have two aspects to our offense, you know, throwing the ball and running the ball. I mean, it, it helps out a lot, you know what I mean? But we got to make some more plays when plays need to be made. There was a point you went down. Was it just a cramp? Because you came back in. Uh, I just got hit in the side of my knee. Sean, the, the field goals, nice to see. 49-yard field goal. Sir. Was there a sense in your mind at any point, though, that we got we got to get touchdowns to set up field goals? Yeah, I mean, you're always conscious of that, you know, and you always want to, you know, especially when you're in the red zone, you know, you want to be able to finish those drives with touchdowns, and, and as simple as it is, obviously, touchdowns worth six are, are more than field goals worth three, you know, in a game like this where you come up short, you know, you, you again, it comes down to each and every single one of those situations where we can execute a little bit better, you know, but the end goal is always to, to finish with, with touchdowns and not settle for field goals. Uh, Isaiah McCoy had a solid game, you know, uh, I think it was the first time he's over 100 yards receiving this season. Um, how has that kind of been, like, seeing that connection between him and Woody grow each week? Yeah, it, it kind of goes back to the way that they prepare together. You know, Isaiah is a kid who who enjoys the the process, so to speak. That every single day when he comes out, he's eager to learn, he's eager to get better. So there's little nuances of his game that continue to get better, and uh, he's got some some skills that he's been blessed with that when he's able to get on top of some some coverage and, and able to run. Um, and again, as as he goes along, you know, early on, obviously as a true freshman, now he's played in six collegiate football games and he's learning what it takes to prepare to play in these games, and his preparation's carrying over to success that he's having on the field. But he still has a long way to go, and our throw game has a long way to go. With that, the last time we were here, when they him and uh, when he connected for 40 yards, you said it was nice to be able to have that in your arsenal. Now they finally did it from 75. Did you know going in that the first play you had would be a deep ball to Isaiah, or was that just what a decision that was made on the fly? I mean, it wasn't made on the fly, you know, but it was, it was something that we, we saw through through preparation and something that they had put on tape that we knew that it was a matchup that it, it, we, we thought we had a good matchup and a shot that we could take it was a good calculated shot, and they did a great job. Isaiah got a great release. He ran underneath the ball. We put it on the money, and uh, obviously it's a great way to start the game. 
And with Woody, uh, there were a couple of plays he kept up with his running, and it was more him not going down, being able to extend out to the extra yards. Is that one of the things that you tell him to just not not every situation go down, sometimes kind of extend plays? Yeah, a lot of it, what we talk about with him is knowing what's a necessary hit versus an unnecessary mm -hmm. hit and knowing that the people that are chasing him and, and everything. And obviously, he's a he's a big physical kid, and he doesn't go down very easily. Uh, you know, So he's got, some again, some special skill sets that I wish I could take credit for some of that coaching and everything. But he, he's a strong physical kid that doesn't like to go down. He likes to play the game. So you know, he, he's going to compete. He's going to fight. And uh, he just needs to do it with a little bit better ball security. Penalties again. Big uh, personal foul penalty yep. uh, in the fourth quarter. Yep. Uh, continue. The, yep. the first few didn't seem to haunt you too much, but that last one kind of. Yeah, you know, it, it is, again, you, you can never tell which which play, whether it's in the first quarter, the fourth quarter, second quarter, third quarter, that's going to that's hurt you one way or another, right? I believe at halftime we had two or three penalties. And then to finish the game with 11, again, that's just a matter of, of our focus, of our self-discipline, and, and making sure across the board because the coach has got a penalty. So we're just as much at fault, you know, and it starts with us and it goes down all the way through to where can we control our emotions, can we play with a, a, a controlled edge, you know, and, and, and not – freak out in those situations, you know, to where we just know and have situational awareness and, and I want our kids to toe the line and I want them to, to play with an edge, but they can't step over that line, you know, to where it comes back and it haunts us. But yeah, at the end of the day, when, you know, you have three takeaways defensively, but you give it up three times and it's a wash, you know, in the turnover margin, and then you look up and you have 11 penalties for 100 yards again, th there's, there's really no other stats that you need to look to because those two factors, as we talk about all the time with the kids, those are the things that if we can't get out of our own way, we're going to beat ourselves consistently. And, and again, unfortunately, that keeps rearing its ugly head, and it's something that we'll continue to preach, and it's something that we will never waver from, and we have to get better at. Anything else? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys.